I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to look at how we can turn an Apple Loop into a sample. Apple Loops are amazing. They're absolutely fantastic sort of adventure playground for sonic experiments and for elements we can drag and drop into our pieces. But we can always take them further. And what we're going to do in this video is to find a section of audio and turn it into a looped instrument, which can be completely recontextualized within the context of a piece. We're going to find a vocal and we're going to turn it into a pad. So I've actually identified the sound we're going to use. It's this um, Apple loop here, Carla Melody 2, and it sounds like this. Okay, now I don't need most of this sound, but there's one element where we get a slightly more sort of sustained pitch. And what I'm gonna do is to see whether or not I can turn that into a sample that I can then turn into something I can map across the keyboard. So you can see that I've opened Logic Sampler, and when I grab this file and bring it into the display for this instrument, what I have a chance to do is to decide how I'm going to map it. And what I want to do is to choose an optimized mapping. This is one of the options that exists up here at the top of the sampler. And when I drag and drop across the um, two options here, I can either apply the entire sample across one file. So in other words, the entire loop that we've just heard will be mapped onto one key. Or what I can do is ask Logic to break it up into individual slices. Well, in this context, I want to choose my own sample, start and end points. So I'm going to go for one zone per file. And what that means is that when Logic's finished analyzing it, which happens incredibly quickly, you can see now that the Apple um, loop has been imported as one long file here. And what I can see straight away is it's been mapped to the root key of C2, which means that actually if I play this note here, we should hear exactly what we heard before. Sure enough. Okay, so I've now got the sample mapped in the way that um, I hoped it would be. But what I want to do is not to listen to the entire sample. What I want to do is to focus in on the area where the pitch is sustained. And that's happening here in this part of the waveform. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the start and end points for this sample into this sort of area. We can refine these choices pretty soon. And having done that, what I'm going to do is to zoom in on this area by pressing the zoom button. So we get this kind of horizontal view, which is just around the selections that we've made. Okay, so what's happening here is that you can see the start and the end points are um, created within these two arrows. And what I can then see is that within those points, I have a chance to set a loop area. Now to start with, I'm kind of just guessing. What I'm going to do is to move the loop within the start and end points. And the way that samplers work is that what this means is when I press a key, what I'm going to hear is the beginning of the sample play, and it's going to play all the way through this area, which is now blue. It's then going to start into this part of the waveform, and then it's going to loop back just around this section. In other words, I'm only going to hear the beginning of this sample every time I play a new key, otherwise it's going to sustain within the looped area of the waveform. Okay, let's have a listen to just what these settings provide us with. Okay, so the sound is sustaining, but obviously it's clicking. And the reason for that is twofold. Firstly, what we haven't in any, one, in any way done is to refine the choices around uh, the area we're looping around, which means that we might be jumping, in fact, it sounds like we are jumping, from an area of the waveform where the sound is sort of active. It's not at a point where the waveform is crossing through zero, where it's effectively silent for a moment. That's the first thing. And secondly, what we're not in any way doing is fading from the end of the file back into the start of the beginning of it again. Both of those things I think will help produce a smoother loop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Logic to look for what we call zero crossings. And what that means is that when I start adjusting this loop point, it's only going to put the loop point on bits of the waveform which pass through zero, which should at least stop it clicking. Let's see what that's provided. <laughs> Okay, so we've still got a real mismatch, but at least now we're searching along some zero crossings. Now what we're going to do is we're going to increase the crossfade. Now what this effectively does is it says, okay, what we're gonna do is to fade out the end of the file and fade in the beginning of the file. So we literally crossfade between these two uh, positions. And this is going to produce a much more musical rounded end to the file as the next one begins to start and fade back in. Let's hear what that sounds like. I'm actually just going to change the root key by taking this up an octave. What I'm going to do is to, I think, allow myself a sort of meteor bass end to this sound. <laughs> Now 
Now what you can hear is that we've got a little bit of pitch change at the very beginning of the note because the start point that I've selected, actually the original performer of this is still bending down into this note. We get this little bit of pitch envelope, which is actually quite nice. There's a little bit too much of it, so I'm going to just bring in the start point a little bit. <laughs> But as loops go, that's not too bad. Now, what I can then do is to use the kind of synthesis parameters within um, the sampler to just to make this all a little bit cleaner. And again, to just emphasize the kind of more sustained, smooth nature of what I'm trying to achieve here. So firstly, what I'm gonna do is to come up to the synth module and I'm going to change the amp envelope. At the moment, you can see that the attack time is set at zero milliseconds, which means I've got this very percussive start. Every time I play a note, it just immediately speaks. And similarly, when I let go of it, it immediately stops. It's not really quite what I want for my kind of smooth synth pad. So what I'm gonna do is to introduce a smoother start, maybe sort of a little bit north of half a second, so 645 milliseconds. Let's start there, see how that sounds. And again, an even more generous release time on the end, maybe a couple of seconds there. Let's have a listen to that. What I'm also going to do is just apply a little bit of filtering to this sound as well. I'm going to use a low pass filter just to take out the sort of um, upper frequencies a little bit. That's working nicely and actually this nice long re uh, sort of release time actually feels a little bit like a reverb but I think actually we might apply a reverb to it as well. We'll come down to the reverb options and I'm going to choose um, Space Designer. And here what we'll do is go and find, um, let's go and have a look for a nice sort of big space. Um, let's have a look in here and we'll see if we can find a big plate, perfect. And what I'm going to do is to keep the dry uh, volume um, exactly as it is and introduce plenty of wet signal under it as well. So within this video, what we've done is to find an Apple loop and turn that into a musical instrument. We'd preloaded sampler, and what we did was to drag in that file, set a start and an endpoint and a loop around it. We've seen the benefit of working with crossfades, and right at the end there, we've added some reverb just to make it sound even more dreamy.